Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV, and this video is all about Bollinger's new pricing and some additional specs that we just found out late last week. Let's go ahead and jump in. Last week, Bollinger released a new press release on the pricing of their vehicles. That was one big thing that we were all wondering after the event that they had last month. They finally announced that the sticker price for this vehicle is going to come in at 125,000 US dollars. And in addition to that, they also released some performance specs that I think are really interesting. So of course, there's a lot of thought and a lot of talk amongst the electric vehicle community about the price. Yes, it's expensive, but I'll talk a little bit about why I think it makes sense for Bollinger as well as some of my questions that I have moving forward. So the first thing that I think is important to note is that this vehicle will be handmade, literally handmade in low volume production in Detroit, Michigan. So this will be an American made car, which I think is really fantastic. And if you follow the automotive industry for any amount of time, you realize how difficult and challenging it is to make a car and sell it. It is not an easy thing to do, but I'm very hopeful that Robert Bollinger, the CEO and founder, has put in, in the right place the right employees to make this a very successful car that people really love. So some specs that we already know, but I'll cover again, just in case you have not seen any videos of mine on Bollinger's vehicles. This will be a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's going to have a 200 mile range, 614 horsepower, and 668 pound feet of torque. In addition to that, there's going to be an eight foot two inch bed length if the cab wall is down or open and the rear seats are removed. If the cab wall is closed, it'll be a bed length of five feet and nine inches. There will be 10 110 volt outlets with an option for a 220 volt for high power usage. This will have a water fording depth of 36 inches or three feet. This is actually three inches less than Rivian's water fording depth. So I think that this is quite impressive and in some ways will give Rivian a run for their money with that water fording ability. In this press release, they made sure to mention that this will be a customizable vehicle. They really wanna to appeal to that customizable consumer who wants to tweak and modify their vehicles. This is something that if you own a Tesla, you're very familiar with because they don't like you tweaking and modifying the vehicle for the most part. Last week, Bollinger released a new press release on the pricing of their vehicles. That was one big thing that we were all wondering after the event that they had last month. They finally announced that, but Bollinger is taking a different approach here. They want you to tweak it. They want you to customize it and make it your own. One of the things that I really love about this vehicle when I saw it last month in Detroit is the ability for this thing to be somewhat modular. So you can remove the doors, you can remove the windows, you can remove the windshield. You can also remove the glass roof panels on the roof of the actual vehicle. This is going to have two permanent magnet motors that will allow shifting between high and low range with a true neutral for flat towing. And if I remember correctly, Bollinger is building these electric motors in-house, which I think is really great because it allows them to be able to customize the experience of the actual vehicle owner. And I did send a message to their PR team to confirm that they are making their own electric motors in-house. I have yet to receive a response, but as soon as I do, I'll put that in the description of this video. And when I look at what this vehicle has to offer in comparison to other electric vehicles on the market, for example, Rivian with their R1S and R1T, as well as Tesla's Model X, the off-roading capabilities of this vehicle really seem to shine as you run through some of these new specs that they just released last week. Speaking of those off-road capabilities, it will have locking differentials, inboard brakes, a portal gear hub, high range gear ratio of 11.4 to one, and a low range of 22 and a half to one as well as a digital transfer case being managed hundreds of times per second. They also seem to leverage this electronic controller to create what reminds me a lot of Tesla's super bottle that I've talked about in previous videos, but 
What Bollinger is doing with this is they're digitizing the ability for the hydraulic pump to be able to have multiple functions within the vehicle. The first one is this hydro pneumatic suspension that allows for a standard 15 inch ground clearance and can be raised or lowered five inches. That hydraulic pump also controls the sway bars and lastly, the steering and brake assist. What are my thoughts on this vehicle? Well, it's $125,000. So for those that are going to be interested in this vehicle, it's probably not going to be your only car. You're probably going to have one or two or more cars to be able to pick from. For me, the range with the price tells me that this is going to be a very niche vehicle you're probably not going to be able to use this as your daily driver unless you're driving less than, let's say, 100 miles in a day. That being said, I really love Bollinger's design approach with these vehicles. It's so boxy and so old school that it really gives it this distinguished design when you compare it to all of the other electric vehicles that are on the market. It reminds me very much like a Land Rover Defender. It also has some elements of a Mercedes G-Wagon. It's just very simple, very old school. It doesn't have a lot of frills and fluff. It just focuses on the off-road capabilities. Now, I do have some questions for Bollinger about these vehicles next time I see them. Number one is how many of these vehicles are they going to need to produce to get back that capital investment or that return that they've made to build this production line or production lines, however many that they've got, to hand build these vehicles. The second question that I have, and probably more importantly, is do they have plans to introduce less expensive variants? Hopefully the answer is yes, and hopefully they're taking a similar route to what Tesla did when they first introduced their original Roadster. That thing came in at somewhere around $120,000, $130,000, and of course, their objective was always to introduce less expensive ones until they hit mass market. I really do hope that Bollinger has the same objective because I fear that if they stay within this price point alone, that it will remain a niche product when really I think that if they can continue to iterate on their products, they can open themselves up to a whole new market just like what we've seen with Tesla and the Model 3 as well as their pending Model Y. What are your thoughts on this? Would this be a vehicle that you would consider buying if you had the money? Does it have enough range? Does it have enough off-road capabilities and towing capabilities for you to spring for a Bollinger. Sean Mitchell, All Things EV, thank you so much for watching and I'll see everyone on the next video.